Hey guys, welcome to the uh, latest edition of the uh, the Untold Truth and Detailing series I'm doing. Um, I want to talk today a little bit about water filtration and how important the different filtration processes uh, are to detailing and, and how it affects the end result when you're using products. Now. As most of you guys know, I own DetailJuice.com. So I work with my chemist directly to formulate products that work just for me. Um, or not just for me, but work for me in my environment perfect uh, where I don't have any issues in the direct sunlight. Um, I also ship product all over the United States to get feedback from other people in their environments. And we make sure that you know they're all tweaked out, ready to go before they're ever launched, uh, where they're working awesome in every environment they're tried in. So what I mean by all of that is I'm I know that the products work well, but all of my stuff is concentrate and you have to mix it with water and I get a lot of questions about um, what if I don't use distilled water or what if I'm not using deionized water or uh, reverse osmosis water and in this episode I'm going to explain to you the differences and I'm I could give you the definition that I know of in my mind of these processes, but instead we're going to rely on Google. So the first step in the situation is um, we're going to look at distilled water. Um, there's purified water. I won't go ahead with the definition of that, but essentially that's fresh water that's broken down and chemically clean. It's like city water that's been filtered. Um, so the city water situation is purified, it is drinkable, it is safe. Uh, you can add the products, my products could be mixed with tap water, that's no problem. Um, the biggest problem is the minerals in the water will counteract, counteract the polymers. Uh, the slickness uh, that the polymers will leave behind, uh, some of the durability, some of the longevity is lost with those minerals. And that goes for any product on the market. I mean, those minerals, you know, sulfur, calcium, iron, you know, magnesium, that kind of stuff, uh, they're solids in the water and they're going to counteract the performance um, of the product that you're mixing the water with. Now, to ensure that you get the best performance, you want to use a filtered water situation. Uh, now, from purified water, I mean, you know, you could go get fresh water from a lake and use that, but that's going to be horrible. It's not going to work well. So then we have our water systems, which purify the water, and that's what the tap water is. I just explained that. Um, it will work fine, you just won't get the maximum benefit out of the polymers that are in the solution. So then the next step, the next best thing that's readily available for anybody to go purchase, and you know, I generally recommend distilled water when you're going to do your final detail spray. I don't feel like you get the maximum uh, benefit or that there is a maximum benefit to be had by using distilled water in the wash process per se because realistically uh, you're not looking for max slick slickness until you've gotten that thing dry and ready to either give back to the customer or if you're an enthusiast uh, you, you, until you're ready to just use that vehicle so in my opinion it's less important to use uh, super filtered water in the wash process with a rinseless wash uh, and more important to use a filtered water situation with the final detail spray or if you're mixing your uh, polymer sealants, your water-based sealant, like a juice boost could be added to infinite use detail juice to enhance the polymer content, adding more slickness, gloss, and protection. So you would get the maximum benefit out of infinite use detail juice by itself as a detail spray or clay lube, whatever and the juice boost 
with using uh, filtered water, uh, generally distilled. Now, distilled water, uh, Google says, distilled water is water that has had many of its impurities removed through distillation. Distillation involves boiling the water and then condensing the steam into a clean container. So it's basically boiling it, it's steaming up, it's going through a tube into another container where that steam is turned back into a liquid. So it's leaving a lot of those minerals in that first container uh, and not transferring them over into the clean container. The problem with that is, just like that said, has had many of its impurities removed, which means it, it's not completely pure. It is just more pure than tap water. So that's generally what I recommend is to use that, especially for your detail sprays or any, any time you're gonna mix in the Juice Boost. I'm not sure about other manufacturers' lines. I don't deal with any of that. Um, I deal with focusing in on my line and making sure that it is the absolute best possible. Uh, and when you're mixing Juice Boost or Infinite Use Detail Juice uh, to do your final wipe down or your final detail spray or you know even with the Juice Boost, um, it's not recommend. It's it is recommended that you use it direct to paint right out of the bottle with no mixing. But if you were going to do a detail spray and you wanted to add some polymer to that uh, to add slickness gloss and a little protection, you could add the Infinite Use Detail Juice and the Juice Boost to the bottle and use that as a detail spray. You won't get the maximum benefit, which is to use it direct to paint but you could also add it to the wash bucket in the Gary Dean wash method with the gallon of water and wash that way. So distilled water is far cleaner than your tap water and it's gonna give you a lot more benefit of the polymers and the slickness and the gloss. Um, it's just not gonna like negatively fight that polymer to, produce, to, to allow the polymer to do its thing. Um, so that's, that's good if you use distilled water uh, in the final detail uh, process or the sealing process. Now, realistically, in a, in a situation where you're using a rinseless wash, that's as far as you should go. Distilled water is about the best that you need. Um, and, and realistically, you don't have to do that. But, you know, in my opinion, I mean, a gallon of distilled water is, I think, 65 cents at my local supermarket. So at 65 cents, I could make a full gallon of detail spray and get the maximum benefit out of it. And I, I feel like it's worth that. Uh, now, again, you know, using a gallon, a, a gallon, gallon and a half of water per car, um, the distilled water still can get costly. It can go into your bottom line. I don't feel like it's... Uh, I mean, you literally could use it every time. Your 10% of the cost to profit ratio, um, I don't think it's going to hurt your bottom line, but I'm just saying it's not a necessity to use uh, the distilled water in the wash process. You can, and you'll get more slickness for sure, um, but it's not a necessity. Now, that is the rinseless situation and the detail spray situation. That's really as far as you really need to think about going is the distilled water with that. Now, if you're going to use, um, you know, a hose and bucket, if you're going to use the perfect soap or another car wash soap to wash your car with, uh, I recommend that you step it up a notch. The next step from distillation is going to be reverse osmosis. Um, my understanding, uh, my understanding uh, per my water guy with the reverse osmosis is that the uh, it's far more expensive to make to build a system uh, to produce the RO water, but the RO water is plenty clean to re to leave sp no spots on your car if you're going to do a pre rinse wash with soap and then rinse it off, let it dry in the sun, RO water is supposed to not deal, uh, not leave behind any spots. Now personally I haven't used RO water uh, because my water guy uh, said that the filtration system I need for deionized water is easier to produce for them and less expensive for me to acquire 
so I just jumped right on the bandwagon with the DI water, which is supposed to be even more filtered than the RO water. So we've got tap water, which is purified water. We've got distilled water. We've got reverse osmosis. Now, just for all intents and purposes, we're going to do... Um, we're going to Google uh, reverse os osmosis water. How does reverse osmosis work? A simple and straightforward water filtration process. Reverse osmosis is a process in which dissolved inorganic solids such as salts are removed from, the, from a solution such as water. This is accomplished by household water pressure pushing the tap water through a semi-permeable membrane. A few impurities found in tap water that can be removed with reverse osmosis filtration technology. Fluoride, chlorine, detergents, lead, pesticides, nitrates, and sulfates. Alright, so it's, it's removing enough of the contaminants that are in the water to not leave behind water spots. So, uh, my water guy says RO water is fine. Like I said, that... You know, the deionized water system was less expensive, easier to uh, obtain, and works. It is more filtered, uh, but that's fine. So the, the deionized water, it says, often con confused with demineralized water, is water that has, all, has had almost all of its mineral ions removed, such as Cations like sodium, calcium, iron, and copper, and anions such as chloride and sulfate. So it's actually taking the harder minerals out, more of the harder minerals out than RO water would. So again, just to recap, you've got your uh, tap water, which is purified. You've got your distilled water, which has a lot of its impurities taken out. It ha you have RO water, which has some of the softer stuff, like your salts and that kind of thing taken out. And then you have deionized water, which is the big daddy, uh, as far as what you would need for doing a traditional wash. Now, with deionized water, it's still not taking everything out. It's just got the most out of all the filtration processes of the total dissolved solids taking, taken out of it. Um, I use um, all Florida water. They are owned by the Culligan Company. And I bet you could do some research and, and, and find someone in your city uh, that will provide you with deionized water tanks. There's two tanks that run in line. Um, you know, again, there's science behind it. All I know is that filters the water so that I don't have to dry it right away. I don't have to worry about uh, water etchings ha happening on the surface of paint. Now, I still do a decent amount of traditional washes just because I'm always testing something. So, uh, you know, on my personal vehicles, you know, I'll, I'll do the Garradine wash method sometimes. But every time I do a traditional wash with the pressure washer and the deionized water and that kind of thing, I'm still using the Gary Dean wash method. So I'm still using a gallon of water in a bucket, but with the perfect soak from DetailJuice.com. I'm still pre-soaking towels. I'm still discarding the towels after uh, four, four sides of the towel have been used. I'm doing the same thing but I'm using, I'm doing that pre-rinse with the deionized water. I'm doing, um, you know, a few panels, rinsing, and then going to a few more panels, rinsing, and I'm still never putting the dirt that came off the car back in that wash bucket. So the exact same bucket situation with the towels that are pre-soaked, I'm doing with a traditional wash, except for instead of using the infinite use detail juice, I'm using the perfect soap, which is pretty awesome. So you can incorporate the Gary Dean wash method into a traditional wash, uh, which is far safer than what we all know of the two bucket method, where you'd have a rinse bucket and a wash bucket, but when you pull your media out of the wash bucket and wash a couple panels, that's dirty. Then you put that in the rinse bucket. Not all that dirt's coming off of that towel or that wash media in that rinse bucket. So you are taking some of that dirt and grime back to your wash bucket and reapplying it to the paint, thus, potentially scratching the paint with that stuff. So the Gary Dean wash method, rinseless wash, 
and the Giardine wash method, traditional wash is pretty important. So try to incorporate that whenever you can. It is the absolute safest way to wash your vehicle uh, on the planet. Uh, unfortunately, you can't get all the contaminants off by simply hosing it down. You can get most of the contaminants now off with a pressure washer and, you know, just being thorough and careful. And that's kind of the other thing is, you know, when you are applying soap, so if you use a foam cannon, it looks really cool. But I have found that, you know, in all of my testing I've ever done, just a heavy stream of water from a pressure washer, 1500 PSI is the max I'd ever use for a pressure washer on a vehicle. Um, just at 1500 PSI, whatever the small pressure washers will put out, being thorough on your pre-rinse, I have not found that doing a foam cannon, foam, snow foam soak on a car and then rinsing that off does any better than just using the pressurized water. I feel like snow foam or foaming a car is a waste of soap. It does get attention though. It draws attention. So if you're looking for the cool factor for a potential customer in a parking lot or whatever, that will give you the cool factor. It looks cool, but it wastes soap and it takes extra time. So you guys know I'm all about saving time because time is money, but so is wasting soap. That's wasting money. So in my opinion, uh, foam cannons are, you know, again, it's, it's not really an opinion, it's a fact. I, I, I have done lots of extensive testing and I can, you know, I feel like the pressure washer will remove just as much dirt as the foam situation than the pressure washer will. I don't feel like that soap encapsulates the dirt and pulls it off the surface. I just don't, don't feel like there's any benefit to that. And I guess, you know, that's the bottom line. I didn't get a microscope out to check it out on a technical level. I know a lot of you guys want to talk about technicalities that really just don't matter in the real world. So, you know, you can get a magnifying glass out and you can do all that stuff and you can sit behind your computer and not do any work while I'm out there doing the real world testing and, and gaining more experience in what I'm doing. But the bottom line is I don't feel like it's worth my money or my time to foam a vehicle, period. So anyway, I'm gonna take you outside now. I'm gonna show you my water tank setup for my deionized water. Uh, now, I'm, you know, I, I don't really work from home, but I don't have a shop. And, you know, because I'm working on, you know, just the product line kind of thing these days, I do uh, some mobile detailing and that kind of thing where I'll take a water tank and fill up the water tank with my deionized uh, water system, but uh, the system is actually at my house. So I'm gonna take you outside now. I'm gonna show you the setup that I have and I'll uh, give you the information to All Florida Water if you're in Florida. You can talk to them. You can give my buddy Jason a call who is my rep for them. He's the guy who swaps out the tank tanks every 12 weeks. I don't want to tell you a price because I don't know that the price is the same, but I can tell you it's very economical to get a deionized water system. And every, like I said, every 12 weeks, he'll come here and he'll swap them out for me. And that's it. He pulls them off the truck. He swaps them out, rehooks them up and I'm good to go. I don't even need to deal with him. I just write him a check. Good to go. Um, the I have the smaller system. They have a larger system. Uh, I don't, again, I don't do a tr traditional wash a lot, but I do do a traditional wash. And when I do, since it's so hot here in the summertime, I don't want to worry about the potential for water etchings and spots. So uh, that is a commercial grade kind of situation where you, if you're in business, uh, you could use that. Or even if you are also an enthusiast, it's inexpensive enough. I would say it's about $40 a month to have that situation. I don't know what the exact pricing is now. I know what I pay. I don't know what's going on with that. That's why I don't want to pinpoint a dollar amount. But about 40 bucks a month, you can have really, really clean water uh, where you can use it for whatever you want, but washing is, is the situation. Uh, the other thing is CR Spotless makes a enthusiast kind of kit you can even get the uh, TDS meter, the total dissolved solids meter on it so you can see you know, what 
shape your water is through the whole process and as you're using that resin it'll tell you when you need to uh, re-up the resin packages in there. Uh, you can find CR Spotless on Amazon uh, it's, uh, or you can go to crspotless.com that's the brand of the little kit uh, that you can buy as a homeowner or an enthusiast and there's no rental fees there's no um, no nothing when the resin can, uh, cartridges go bad then you just swap them out. You order new ones and swap them out yourself, and then you own the machine. So uh, you can get it with a little cart. You can do, I think they have a couple different models, um, but I generally recommend the one with the cart, the TDS meter, uh, and the biggest one. It's either, I think it might be 300 gallon flow through, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, you can, I can wash a car with a pressure washer with like eight to 10 gallons of water, which is pretty efficient. So, uh, you know, that's a lot of car washes for one setup. But check out CR Spotless, and I'm going to take you outside now. I'm going to show you my water setup. Uh, also, check out All Florida Water. The, I had him put some nice stickers on my tanks when he was here the other day so you guys can see that information. So, uh, let's go do that. All right, we're out here on the side of my house right now. And uh, this is the setup right here. So... Uh, so I've got the water coming out of, uh, the city water spigot on the house into a small extension and it goes into the C tank and then it goes through the C tank filtration, goes over to the A tank filtration, then it comes out into my hose and, uh, I can either use the regular garden hose nozzle for that or if I want to conserve water and get more pressure, which is better when you're pre-rinsing, uh, I will use my AR, I believe that's a 118 pressure washer, and uh, get more pressure out of that and conserve water. So it's a little bit more efficient to use a pressure washer, but that's my setup for deionized water. I mean, I just run it outside into my driveway if I need to wash something. But there you have it, nothing fancy. These are the stickers I was telling you about. This is all Florida water. And you can call 800-800-5892 or go to allfloridawater.com and uh, they can hook you up, ask for Jason and uh, and get you straightened out. I got this zero G hose from a buddy of mine for for my birthday. It's got a uh, aluminum ends on it, which is pretty cool. Um, it's got it like contracts into a smaller situation. Um, it kinks up a lot. Other than that, the hose is pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, that's my situation. Uh, again, not complicated, complicated, but it's really awesome. And uh, I don't have to worry about water spots, and they maintain the tanks, they come figure it out, I don't have to do anything, I don't have to buy new resin packs, nothing. They just come, swap them out, I've always got the purest water that I can get uh, for washing vehicles. So. Alright, so I just took you outside to see the water filtration system and my little setup for when I'm washing cars in the driveway. Uh, if you guys got it, any questions at all 813-846-4406 is my personal cell phone number um, let me know if you got any questions if i can help you with anything uh if uh you i mean just anything anything i can help you with detailing related i'm always available check out detailjuice.com also check out gary dean's detail juice nation it's a group on facebook where we only talk about my my processes my products and if you're curious about my products if you want to talk to people who have an unbiased opinion about them i would i would go to that group i would uh inquire i would ask questions i would talk about my products and then you know a lot of times i let those guys talk about it whatever if i see something that's not right or somebody asks me a question directly i'll chime in but for the most part i try to stay out of that unless i need to relay a message to the group um, because i'm obviously biased uh you know i am a sales guy you know so yeah i want 
I want to convince you to buy my products and not use anybody else's stuff. That is absolutely the case. However, you don't, I don't necessarily have to do that. Uh, you know, the, once people use the products, they love them. And, you know, there's always a support system, whether it's directly through me, which is awesome. No other product line manu manufacturer is doing that. No, you cannot call the head guy at any company at any time you want to get information about detailing and him respond to you, you know, in any given good amount of time. I mean, that just doesn't happen. So you have my personal cell phone number and you have access to many, many people who already use my products where you can get information as soon as you want it uh, at Gary Dean's Detail Juice Nation. So again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for watching my videos. Please subscribe to the channel. Please tell your friends. I'm trying to give you guys information that no other detailer, no other company wants to give you. If you got a request for a video, please let me know. I'll get it on the list. I'll get that shot. I want you guys to be successful in your detailing endeavors, whether you're an enthusiast, a hobbyist, or a professional detailer. I want to help you. Please give me a call if you need me. 813-846-4406. Thanks again. Have a great day.